Now that we've got our feet wet with this manipulation of Boolean expressions, um, let's, let's talk about some identities of Boolean algebra. Now, you all are familiar with this idea of an identity, and, and you may not know the term, but I'm sure you're familiar with the fact that a times zero, or anything times zero, equals what? Zero, right? Anything times one equals what? Itself. Anything plus zero equals what? Itself. And so we have this idea of these identities. Well, it turns out that in Boolean algebra, they work phenomenally well. Whenever you only have the values of zero or one, the identities work out pretty neat. They're, they're kind of nifty. So let's talk about our three properties, right? Or excuse me, our three logic operations. We have and, right? We have or. And then we have exclusive or. We haven't talked a lot about exclusive or whenever it comes to Boolean logic because it turns out, or excuse me, Boolean algebraic expressions, because it turns out that the exclusive or itself is not a, a low level gate. We talked about how and is kind of like a series of switches. All the switches have to be down for a connection to be made. We talked about or being like parallel switches where if any one of them is closed, we have a path. Exclusive or doesn't have that kind of a, of, a, of a configuration. We can't do something like that. Turns out that an exclusive or is made up of ands, ors, and nots. So, but we're going to do this in this identities of Boolean algebra table just to kind of see the uniqueness that these, um, that these uh, logic operations give us. And then I'm going to make columns. I'm going to say with self, with inverse, with one, and with zero. Okay. And so these are the different ways we can combine, you know, kind of like whenever you, anything added to zero or anything anded with zero or ORed with zero or exclusive ORed with zero. And we're going to prove each one of these. Now, how do we prove things? We prove them with a truth table because in Boolean algebra, it's very easy to enumerate all the possible um, combinations of inputs we could have to a circuit in order to see what the output would be. Now, for each one of these, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down what the expression looks like. For example, when I say anding something with itself, that's like A and A. Or, oring something with itself, A or A. Or, exclusive oring something with itself, A, exclusive ORed with A. All right? And in fact, let's go ahead and finish this table up. Uh, being combined with an inverse, so A ended with A bar, A ORed with A bar, A exclusive ORed with A bar. And then with 1, A and 1, A OR 1, and A exclusive ORed with 1. And then our last column, if we've got room here, A OR 0 excuse me, A and zero, A or zero, and A exclusive ORed with zero. All right, now, so what are we looking at? We're looking at a truth table. Let's just go ahead and make a truth table here. The values of A, how many possible values of A do we have? Well, zero or one, just those two possible values, right? So, uh, let's do the first one. How about, a ended with A. Well, A ended with A is just 0 and 0, which is equal to 0. In the case of A is equal to 1, that's 1 and 1, that's equal to 1, right? Anything ended with itself, you've got 0 and 0 is equal to 0. 1 and 1 is equal to 1. Well, if you look at it, it looks like it just simply follows whatever A is equal to. That's what the output is. That's what the output of A and A is equal to. In fact, it's kind of like any number of A's anded together. That's going to be equal to A. So I could have A and A and A and A, and they'd still all simplify down to A. So 
Anything anded with itself is just equal to itself. Now, something that's important to notice here is that this doesn't just apply to just a signal A. It could be that I have B or C anded with B or C. What's that equal to? Well, it's something anded with itself. That's just equal to B or C. So you can do these substitutions without any issues at all. All right, let's see what happens. Let's back, let's just go across the row. What happens, erase some of this. What happens when you and something with its inverse? So A and A bar. Well, when A is equal to zero, A bar is equal to one. When A is equal to one, A bar is equal to zero. What do we have? Well, zero and one, that's zero. One and zero, that's zero, all right? So it looks like anytime you and something with its inverse, that equals zero. Why? Because there's no way you can have one anded with one if the one is being inverted to a zero. It's impossible, okay? All right, next one. Going across the rows, how about what happens when you and A with one? What happens when you and something with one? A and one, so when A is zero, that's zero anded with one. When A is one, that's one anded with one. What is zero and one? Zero. What is one and one? One, all right? So it looks like anytime you and something with one, A just passes straight through. Kinda like multiplication, right? Anytime I multiply something with one, it becomes itself. Well, anytime I and something with one, that also is itself. All right. What happens if I and something with zero? All right. What happens when I and something with zero? Well, when a is zero, I get zero and zero is equal to zero. When a is one, I get one and zero is equal to zero. Gosh, that seems a lot like multiplication. Anything anded with zero is zero. All right. And so there are all of the identities for the and operation. Anything anded with itself is itself. Anything anded with its inverse is always zero. Anything anded with one is itself. Anything anded with zero is zero. Okay. All right. Let's look at the next row. The row where we're discussing or showing what happens when you or A with different things. So, A or A, this first one here. Now, in mathematics, A plus A is equal to 2A, right? We ain't got a 2, do we? We only have 1 and 0. So, what happens whenever you do 0 or 0 and 1 or 1? Well, when a is a zero, zero or zero is equal to zero. When a is when a is a zero, a zero or zero is equal to zero. When a is a one, one or one is equal to one. Looks a little bit like the multiplication or the and, doesn't it? Anytime a is a zero, the result of a or a is a zero. Anytime a is a one, the result of a or a is equal to a one. So it looks like anything ORed with itself is just equal to itself. All right. Now, next one in row. Next one in the line. Anything ORed with its inverse. So when A is equal to a zero, its inverse is equal to a one. When A is equal to a one, its inverse is equal to zero. So when you OR something with its inverse and it's zero, that's a one. Zero or one is a one. One or zero, that's a one. Wow, it looks like regardless of what A is equal to, when you or it with its inverse, it's always equal to one, always, regardless of what A is, or regardless of what you're oring with the inverse is. All right. All right, next one. 
going through these pretty quickly, aren't we? What happens when you OR A with 1? Well, 0 OR 1 is 1. 1 OR 1 is 1. And think about this. Remember, the OR gate is just saying that if there's a 1 at my input, I'm going to output a 1. Well, if one of them is a constant 1, I'm going to output a 1. So anything ORed with 1 is equal to 1. What happens when we OR something with 0? Last column. Well, 0 or 0 equals 0. 1 or 0 equals 1. Kind of follows, doesn't it? If I've got a 0 going into my OR gate ORed with a 0, I output a 0. If I've got a 1 going into my OR gate being combined with a 0, I output a 1. So anything ORed with 0 is equal to itself. All right. So, last row. Let's do things a little bit differently whenever it comes to the last row. Let's erase this, and instead of doing this little truth table, I'm going to go ahead and do the two input exclusive or truth table. If you remember, the two input exclusive or truth table looked like this. I have A and B, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then I have the output of the exclusive or. A exclusive ORed with B. If they're the same, I output a zero. Same, output a zero. So for the top row and the bottom row, zero, zero, outputs a zero, one, one, outputs a zero. If they're different, or if there's exactly one, one going into this exclusive OR gate, I output a one. Now, let's first look at this top one. Anything exclusive ORed with itself? Well, if A is equal to a 1, <laughs> A is equal to a 1, right? So it's this 0, 0 outputs a 0, or 1, 1 outputs a 0. And that's equal to 0 always. And in fact, we're going to use that whenever it comes to, well, we're not talking about assembly language just yet. Who knows? Some of you may move on to assembly language. Whenever you want to clear a value frequently, a, the instruction to do this in assembly language, well, it's actually a two-step process. It would be something like, um, well, let, let's, let's do, it would be, you know, there's any number of types of assembly languages, but assembly language is real low-level language, might be something like um, move into A the number zero, okay? Now, this operation actually takes two steps. Step one, go get the instruction from memory. Step two, go get the constant that we want to store in A. And that's, that constant is also stored in memory. So we've got two accesses to memory. First access to get the instruction. Second access, what value we want to store into A. There's a quicker instruction, just simply saying XOR A with A. And when you do that, all the bits of A get cleared. Just, just because of this principle right here. Anything exclusive word with itself clears it. And this actually is just a single instruction. You don't need to get a constant. So it turns out this is a faster instruction than this is. And so oftentimes you'll see in, in if you want to initialize something to zero, in assembly language it's actually going to appear as an exclusive or. Let's take a look at the next one. Anything exclusive word with its inverse. These two lines right here are something being exclusive word with its inverse. Zero exclusive word with one, one exclusive word with zero, always outputs a one. All right, anything exclusive word with one. Tell you what, let's look at the bottom rows of this truth table. This is where we have one exclusive word with zero is one, one exclusive word with one is zero. So it turns out, if you look at this, if, if I'm taking one and always ex whatever I exclusive or it with, it's inverted. So the B, a zero, becomes a one. The one, B, equals a zero. So it turns out to exclusive or something with a one means I invert it. 
Sorry about the sorry about the bad board management up here. All right, hopefully that's clear now. And then lastly, what happens whenever I do an exclusive OR with zero? Well, if I do an exclusive OR with zero, let's look at the top row. If I exclusive OR A being a zero with B, whatever B is just passes straight through to the output. And basically anything exclusive OR with zero is itself. Later on, we're gonna use this tool when we do something called bitwise operations. And bitwise operations are gonna allow us to manipulate numbers at the bit level. And in fact, that is a bitwise operation, that assembly language command up there. So this, whenever we get to simplification of Boolean expressions, this table is going to really help us out. It's gonna tell us that as we manipulate things, certain, certain things are gonna appear, something being something being combined with itself or something being combined with its inverse or something being combined with a constant, these are gonna appear in our expressions as we start to manipulate them. And those are gonna be the red flags that are gonna help us solve our problems. Something being combined with itself, something being combined with its inverse, or something being combined with a constant makes it so that Boolean algebraic simplification is a lot easier than mathematical algebraic simplification.